right now on Five on Your Side at 10. FAFSA frenzy. Tonight, delays in obtaining financial aid for college. How some local universities are showing students the money. Warmer air is here to stay through the Easter holiday weekend. Also, I'll time out any storm chances. Our top story, a college student from St. Louis missing for months. I just want him home. Tonight, new hope for his family as police on the other side of the state ramp up their search. Kansas City police now asking for the public's help in finding 19 year old Tomatis Hurt. Good evening. I'm Mike Bush. I'm Kelly Jackson. The Missouri Western University student was last seen 56 days ago. His grandmother is desperate for answers. She spoke with Robert Townsend tonight. For nearly two months, Tacona Donald Sullivan has traveled to Kansas City and passed out more than 2,000 flyers searching for her missing 19-year-old grandson, Tamantez Hurt. I looked in alleys, I rode their buses. I went across a bridge in Kansas City, Kansas. But still, not even a trace of her grandson. Hurt is a freshman at Missouri Western University and lives on campus. That's about an hour from Kansas City. His grandmother says on February 1st, Tamantez called her from a home of a woman he recently met. She said he was scared and in mental distress. I sent him to the hospital because he was not acting like himself. Tamantez was discharged and last seen on surveillance camera trying to enter a Greyhound bus station that was closed. On Wednesday, Kansas City Police posted this flyer of the missing man on their Facebook page and for the first time pleaded to the public for help. I wasn't getting any answers from KCPD. A KCPD spokesperson says detectives have exhausted all investigative leads at this time and feel it is in the best interest of the case to request assistance from the public. That's all I wanted in the beginning to get him out here because Kansas City is very big. Meantime, the missing persons task force headquarters in St. Louis is now stepping in to help her find her grandson. So we're putting together not only a, ma a major search, but we're putting a major social media and local boots on the ground campaign for awareness. I can feel that he is alive. Hurt's case is getting national attention next week. NBC's Dateline is expected to reach out to Donald Sullivan and profile her grandson's disappearance. Tonight, the family of the Mizzou student found dead in Nashville, Tennessee, two weeks after he was reported missing or seeking another autopsy. His body was found in the Cumberland River last week. Police believe his death was an accident. A family friend says Strain was found without his wallet, pants, boots, and no water in his lungs. We talked with former St. Louis medical examiner, Dr. Michael Graham. He tells us it's not unusual for bodies found in water to not have water in the lungs or to be missing clothing because of currents. There will be a public visitation for strain tomorrow in his hometown of Springfield, Missouri. Tonight, a no bond warrant is out for a St. Louis firefighter charged with possessing child sex abuse images. And court documents reveal he may have viewed them while on the clock. Investigators say they found more than 200 pictures and videos on Jarrett Morton's phone and a Dropbox registered to his email address. They were traced back to an IP address assigned to Firehouse 5 on North Market Street in North City. We've reached out to the department for comment and we have not yet heard back. Tonight, dozens of women could be victims of an invasion of privacy. St. Charles County prosecutors say Timothy Fry secretly recorded partially and fully nude women in public restrooms and dressing rooms across the area. Investigators did not release specific locations. One of the victims was as young as 15 years old. Fry posted bond just yesterday. Did you feel it? A magnitude 2.8 earthquake rocked the Metro East just before 7 tonight. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the epicenter was in Clinton County, just north of Germantown. People throughout the Metro East reported feeling the tremor. There are no reports of damage or injuries. A frenzy tonight for current and prospective college students struggling with applications for federal student aid. The process is plagued by delays. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski explains how it's all due to a major overhaul of the FAFSA program. Laura? 
It is, Mike. Not only were there problems submitting applications, universities still haven't received as many of the completed applications because of the FAFSA software overhaul. And three, therefore, families don't have the results to make the best decision on where to send their students to school. Parkway South parent Stacy Burian says it took them from December to March to file a FAFSA application for their daughter who's set to graduate in May. She had to restart her application maybe seven or eight times. She was accepted to three schools, including St. Louis University. And while all of them have been understanding of the issue, they're all on different timelines. But we are also getting emails from schools saying, hey, your down payment's due. Well, we don't we don't know what that is and we don't know if she's going there. St. Louis University is trying to take the guesswork out of this for families by providing their own financial aid tool. For example, if their data shows the student will likely get a thousand from the government and SLU will provide another thousand, they'll get a two thousand dollar award. We then ultimately do get the FAFSA information, which we do have to have. And the federal grant is only nine hundred and fifty dollars. We'll make that that slew grant a thousand and fifty so that the family is held harmless. It's still a two thousand dollar award. SLU says they hope families can make a decision by May 1st, but there's flexibility there. Webster University is also taking a similar approach. We've pretty much done away with our priority deadlines and we're accommodating students to uh, provide them the aid that they would receive if they would have applied early in the normal year. While University of Missouri St. Louis doesn't have a hard deadline, which is especially important for families who have to make corrections. Once those corrections happen, that doesn't necessarily mean that the schools are going to be getting that information right away. So there still could be further delays at that point. Borian says even though they're holding out hope to get this info in time, they're also planning ahead. Maybe consider um, a year at a community college until they can figure this out. You can get some gen eds out of the way. All three schools I spoke to say they're behind in receiving the applications from the government. Webster University says so far they've received 2,500, but have only been able to process roughly 320 because the others require corrections. We're just one week away from an unofficial holiday in St. Louis, the Cardinals home opener. The Redbirds open the season today at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Sports director Frank Cusimano joins us now, and Frank, today looked a lot like last year. Yes, eerily similar, Mike. You know, many college football coaches like to open their seasons with the weakest teams possible. Get the win, everybody's happy. Major league managers don't get to schedule. The Cardinals opened up against arguably the best team in baseball, the Dodgers. Third inning, already 2 nothing Dodgers, and Mookie Betts will take Miles Michaelis deep, make it 3 to nothing. Two batters later, Freddie Freeman takes Miles deep, two-run shot, Michaelis went four to third and allowed five runs. Spring training stats mean nothing. Paul Goldschmidt had all three Cardinal hits, including that home run. Dodgers win it seven to one. The skipper on his starting pitcher. Miles did a nice job. He was on the attack. He got clipped a couple times, um, but 18 at 20 first pitch strikes. Um, did what he normally does. He attacked the zone. Um, that's got him 0-0, and then. Uh, Freeman got him, oh, oh, and uh, they took good swings off of him, but um, he executed what he was trying to do as far as getting ahead. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. The Cardinals will play game two tomorrow. Zach Thompson gets the ball for the Birds. For more information about next week's home opener and what's new at Bush Stadium this year, just text the word CARDS to 314-425-5355. Tonight, Metropolitan Sewer District held its final public meeting on two measures on the ballot next Tuesday. Prop W will make improvements to the wastewater system. Voters get to decide whether to pay for the next four years of work up front or spread the cost over time. Prop S would raise taxes to fund stormwater programs. MSD says the cost for homeowners would be about $25 a year. For more polling place information and what's on the ballot, just head to ksdk.com slash guide, or you can text the word guide to 314-425-5355, and we'll send you a link. Tonight, Congresswoman Cori Bush is urging Walgreens to reconsider closing the store in North St. Louis. She sent a letter today to the company's CEO saying the closure would further exacerbate the issue of pharmacy deserts in her district. The store at North Grand and MLK Drive is set to close April 9th. It is part of the pharmacy chain's move to shutter more than 150 stores nationwide. New tonight, a special effort to recruit black mentors to volunteer for Big Brothers Big Sisters. It's called Black 365. As Brent Solomon explained, 
explains it's a campaign to match more children with mentors who look like them. And right now, there's a huge demand. If you've watched the local news lately, you've seen the headlines. Is reacting to a tragic string of teen violence. A family of a 16-year-old girl critically hurt in a fight after school. After a video of teens fighting in Hazelwood when... The teen was arrested in Jefferson City and is being held at a... A local group that served our community for decades continues the work to put young people on the right track. Providing our youth with the opportunity to have an outlet with somebody they can just talk to. Robert Hughes is with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Eastern Missouri. The group is working to recruit 300 black mentors in 65 days. So 365, that's the play on the numbers. But why? We have a waiting list of approximately 80% African American children that are looking for representation of themselves. She'll be a teenager soon. <laughs> Constance Johnson is a big sister to 12-year-old Brianna. They've had their relationship for five years. I want to know what's going on in school. I want to know how she's hanging out with her friends and what's the newest movie she's thinking about. She believes more youth can benefit from relationships like this. They're not all bad apples and sometimes they just need exposure. It's more than just our neighborhood. We get a chance to experience other things and try new things that she's never done before. Exposure, opening doors to excel. I don't know on any given day without this campaign, when you have people sign up to be a mentor, do you have a large number of black people volunteering? No, we do not. Um, that's why this is so important. And with that said, you won't turn any volunteer away. Never, never. Brent Solomon, five on your side. And the program asks volunteers to commit for one year, providing four hours of quality time with a mentee per month. There will be a Black 365 kickoff day party and registration drive on April 6th. And we have more information for you on KSDK.com. The debate over four day school weeks. That extra day to our weekend is absolutely priceless. Supporters call it addition by subtraction. Tonight, the I-Team looks into a push in Missouri to slow the trend. Now you're going to have a day a week that a lot of folks are going to have to try to find childcare. The warmest air of spring so far and just in time for Easter, plus some timing out storm chances, mainly late into the weekend and into Monday.